Hey there, I'm Brad Feld, co-host of the Give First podcast, along with David Cohen. In this podcast, we talk about mentors and entrepreneurs in the startup world and discuss the concept of Give First, which means being willing to help other people without an expectation of return. It's not altruism. You do expect to get something back, but you just don't know when, from whom, and what consideration over what time period. Stay tuned for some great stories from some outstanding entrepreneurs about how making Give First makes great entrepreneurship possible. And now, before we really get started, the legal stuff, spoken really quickly. The following discussion is an expression of personal opinion does not represent the opinion of Techstars or any company we discuss. Our conversation is for informational purposes only, including any mention of securities or funds. This is not legal, business, investment, or tax advice, and it's not intended for use by any investor. Certain of Techstars funds own or may own in the future securities in some of the companies discussed in this podcast. This is not in tiny little print at the bottom of the advertisement on your TV set, because it's a podcast. Today, we're talking to Sherry Hammonds on Give First. Uh, this is Brad Feld. Um, Sherry, welcome. Thank you. It's very great to be here. I've gotten to know Sherry over the last uh, couple of years pretty well through uh, her work at the Nature Conservancy, where she joined recently as Chief Technology Officer. Um, I knew Sherry also before that through her work for the state of Colorado as the chief technolo technology officer under uh, our most recent previous governor, John Hickenlooper. Um, Sherry, you want to talk a little bit about your career, maybe give us a couple of minutes of just how you got to where you are today. Sure. Yeah. I probably took the non-traditional path to CTO land. Um, I grew up in Oklahoma and I was a singer for a lot of time, about eight years professionally. And uh, I turned 29 and realized that um, I probably wasn't going to make uh, <laughs> headlines singing. So I went back to college and got a degree in software engineering and fell in love with it because it's so, it's so uh, creative. And uh, so I've worked at many different kinds of organizations from DoubleClick and when it was sold to Google. Um, you mentioned the CTO for Colorado. Um, I was in a startup. For a couple of years, I sold a company uh, a couple of years ago and then landed it to TNC and I'm, I'm doing a stint with a nonprofit, which I'm super excited about. So I'm not going to let the singing thing slide by so quickly. What what, what what did you sing? You know, I sang a little bit of everything, but I would say probably most of it was alternative kind of music. I was on uh, KBCO a little bit, um, you know, for about five minutes, but um, it was uh, it was really fun time. I had a, a blast for those eight years, but. Uh, you know, it's it's hard it's hard living. You, you you got a microphone in front of you and you're being recorded. Do you want to give us a little sample? <laughs> Absolutely not. But <laughs> <laughs> so maybe spend a few minutes CTO of Colorado after working for DoubleClick and Google and a couple of other for profit companies. Uh, what? Why why that? <laughs> yeah, exactly. Um it, I was actually at a startup prior to uh, going to government. It was a little bit like hitting a brick wall at 500 miles an hour. Um, you know, it's just like you think. Government is hard. It's a really big organization, and um, they're really hard to change and transform. But um, the good news was, you know, Governor Hickenlooper was really progressive and wanted to be very innovative. And so we were able to do um, some kind of interesting things around citizen engagement and, and some other types of uh, platforms that actually are now being used, um, you know, more widely on, across all 50 states. So um, it was uh, it was really a great time. I was there for about two and a half years. Um, and uh, then it was, you know, really time to, to leave and and go do some other things. When, when you found yourself uh, sort of in government, uh, working with uh, with with again Looper and, and his team, when you reflect about the fundamental difference between that kind of service and working, you know, in a CTO or a senior exec role in a in a technology company, how would you how would you line out the thing if there was sort of an essence of difference? You know, I think the the probably the biggest difference I would say is that you know, you know, when you're in public office that there's a timeline where you're probably not in public office anymore. And you know, for the governorship, it's, you know, four years. And if you get reelected, it's, it's four more. And in Colorado, that's, there's term limits. And so that's, that's it. So what I would say is that you have kind of the lifers in government, and then you have the people who are elected officials that aren't lifers. And I think that's the probably biggest difference. You have similar things in um, the private sector, but it's, 
it's not as readily apparent, I guess, if you will. So I, I you know, the people who want to be there forever, you know, don't necessarily always want to do whatever this particular um, you know, incoming governor or president or whatever wants to do. So there's there's just kind of a, a bit of a goal difference there as opposed to the private sector. So I, I would say that's probably my biggest difference. And, you know, then, of course, the color of money. I mean, in a government position, um, you know, it's, it's a lot of grants. It's a lot of, uh, you know, you're not really there to try to make money. So that's a big a big difference is the competition kind of phase. So, so you rolled from this government world after being in the in the private sector to now being CTO of uh, a very large nonprofit. And for listeners out there that don't have a sense of the scale of uh, the Nature Conservancy, or think of the Nature Conservancy as just a land conservation organization, maybe start off, Sherry, just give a super quick flash on what TNC is today and. More importantly, what attracted you to this particular role? Because you could have had a role sort of in a CTO role in any company you wanted in Colorado, probably. Well, uh, yeah, I'm super excited about uh, TNC. I've been there about eight months and they they were land preservation. You're right for about, I don't I want to say 70 years, perhaps. Um, but recently they've wanted to um, transition to more, you know, kind of global problems. And so there's really four pillars that they work with is protecting land and water. Um, uh, protecting uh, sustainable, you know, fisheries and and eat, you know, and food and water, um, tackling climate change, and then building healthy cities. And so that that in and of itself, I mean, that's enough to you know make you want to you know help. <laughs> and and uh, so I uh, I was super excited actually when they called me. I was leaving the the, the company that I was I was in. I hadn't really started you know a search yet when TNC called. So it was really, the timing was fabulous. Um, but, and also, I mean, you know, when someone calls you and says, Hey, do you want to try to change the world? Um, you know, it's hard to say no to that. Right. <laughs> One of the things that I find really fascinating about TNC, uh, as providing a role f- as nature's banker. And so sort of the view that, you know, every entity needed, uh, a banker, um, there's a, another nonprofit, Earth Justice, that uh, Amy, Amy, my wife, and I support that describe themselves as Earth's lawyer. And so this notion of nature's banker and sort of being creative, not just around the financial elements of it, but around the technology and innovation elements of it. Can, can you ex- sort of think about the eight months that you've had there and sort of how you see TNC evolving towards more innovation? Yeah, I mean, I've, I've given it, you know, eight months worth of thought. So, um, you know, we often don't think about nature, you know, in an everyday setting, but yet we we do love it and it, it is, you know, required for life. And, um, you know, so I do love the fact that TNC is out there and, and making, you know, people aware how, how we're looking at innovating. Um, you know, we all know that there's a lot of global situations happening. There's, you know, some climate change there's, um, you know, food and water is, you know, to try to provide food and water sustainably for 10 billion people that are projected by 2050 is going to be difficult. Um, and so, you know, what can TNC do about that? And so they've, they've tasked me with, with thinking about that. And, and where we're really going to be focused is um, what are the right places for us to preserve nature in order to be able to provide food and water sustainably and protect our planet? And that can include even, you know, we know nature can actually uh, do carbon sequestration, right? Tr- trees are a great place um, to, you know, help uh, remove carbon from the earth, from the from the air. And so I'm looking at ways that we can actually harness that science and that conservation. Um, and then how do we actually scale that globally to be able to figure out where the biggest bang for our buck is. And so I, I think of Nature's Bank in, in my world of technology as leveraging artificial intelligence and machine learning type practices um, to be able to decide where um, we can make the most um, change and protect the planet, um, you know, and nature um, in the, you know, in the, in the best way possible as quickly as possible. Techstars and the Nature Conservancy have developed a very uh, nice and interesting relationship uh, that emerged uh, with the creation of the Techstar Sustainability Accelerator and the partnership between the two organizations. Um, we're, Techstars is, I think, in final selection process now with TNC for the uh, the next program, which is going to start to run in a couple of months. 
when you heard about uh, TNC doing an accelerator as sort of as part of the interview process and, and when you were thinking about joining TNC, what was your reaction to, to that as an initiative that TNC would be leaning into? Well, I thought it was brilliant, actually, because I thought it was a really a great way to leverage um, entrepreneurial minds um, to be able to help um, you know solve these big climate problems and um, allows us to you know partner with these startups where TNC will never be a product shop. You know we're not a product organization; we don't build products, and so allowing us to actually partner. Um, with these startups is is really amazing and transformational, not only for the startup but for TNC. So I'm I'm super excited about it. Well, let's uh, let's talk a little bit about some personal stuff. Uh, maybe we'll go back to that singing thing. Are you sure you don't want to sing? <laughs> I'm pretty sure. I'm pretty okay. sure. I, I'm, it's too early for a cocktail, Brad. <laughs> Uh, I talked to a couple of people that know you well and have worked with you. One of them is uh, someone who I think is awesome, which is uh, Sue, Sue Heilbronner. I know her well and many of the things Sue has done with Merge Lane and, and other things uh, in the Boulder uh, startup community have been really impactful. Um, Sue said a bunch of really neat things about you, but she had a phrase that stuck out, which um, I thought was both fascinating and really powerful. Um, she described you as a humble badass. <laughs> and if you know Sue, that I can almost hear Sue saying that. Uh, but I, I just want to talk about that some sort of two two sides of it. One is through your own growth and development as a leader, um, how did you develop your own sense of humility around that? And where did it come from? And at the same time, sort of how do you square it with this notion of being a badass. I mean, you know, you're you're a, a, a female CTO. Um, you've been involved in a number of organizations, both small and large. Um, having worked with you, I would I would echo Sue's comments that uh, you are a humble badass. So how how did, does that does that ring true for you? And how, how did you develop that kind of style? <laughs> well, first of all, I love Sue. Thank you for that, Sue. Um, and uh, I appreciate it, Brad, uh, bringing that up. You know, I've never thought of myself as a humble Brett badass, but I, I love it. I, maybe I'll make a T-shirt. Um, you know, I I would say that you know I grew up in Oklahoma, and I grew up with parents who were um, who who taught us to be humble. To be perfectly honest, and in in kind of that giving spirit, they taught us to always give and always be nice to everyone, no matter what. And so I I think that that actually really helped both my sister and I um, through our careers. The, the first time I ever managed people, though, I realized our humanity. And by that, I mean, people who are stressed often go to that place of, you know, I'm going to lose my job. I'm going to lose my family if, you know, bad things are happening. And, you know, and especially startups, right, where, where there's so much on the line. And so I think one thing that I learned is that, you know, you you need to be humble with people when they are having that those those types of, of days and you need to give them a safe place. Um, so that's always worked for me. Um, as far as the badass goes, um, I don't know if that's true or not. I, I think that, you know, it's technology's always been, uh, you know, uh, not as gender diversified as we'd like. And, you know, I just, you know, kind of learned to, you know, to roll with the punches, if you will. Um, I also will say that, you know, when I grew up in Oklahoma, I grew up on a horse on a farm. And so I know about, you know, getting bucked off a Bronco and getting back up. So maybe that helped me be a bit of a badass, I hope. I don't know. It's <laughs> great. I uh, I grew up in Dallas. And, and uh, do you know why Texas doesn't fall into the ocean? <laughs> because Oklahoma sucks. There you go. <laughs> Noth nothing like a good cliche in the middle of a podcast, right? <laughs> I love it. Uh, one of your uh, one of your mentees or a person who refers to themselves as a mentee is uh, Nira Swami. And uh, the there's a story that Nirish tells about a, a board meeting um, that was the first board meeting around this merger between, I, I guess it was the company you worked for prior uh, to uh, joining TNC. Uh, it was a merger between two companies and sort of at the first board meeting, sort of your interaction, that board meeting where you pitched this big vision for the organization and Nearish remembers getting a note from somebody in the board meeting, a text from someone who said that you had eloquently outlined the vision while specifically crediting folks on the team. And, and that really stood out, right? And this notion of, 
especially when you're sort of on display, uh, you're front and center in something, this idea of being able to do it effectively, but also be, you know, coming back to this notion of humble, um, but clear that you're capable. Do you remember this, this particular uh, board meeting? Well, I hope that at every board meeting, I give my team credit. Um, but I do, I think I do remember um, that particular board meeting. I, I will say, and, and you know this, and it, it probably is cliche, but you can't do this alone, right? I mean, you're, you're never going to be, you know, in a position, especially an executive in an organization where you don't have people um, who you're reliant on. And, you know, they need to feel good. They need to get up every day and want to come to work. And um, that's what I try to do with my team. I'm, I'm fortunate enough that I've worked with some really great people. And I'm fortunate enough that we get to work together at many different places. So Niraj and I, he's now at TNC um, and I get to work with him again and uh, have some other people like that. So um, I don't know. I guess I would just say, you know, I think you just have to remember that it's it's not all you. Um, and, you know, and if you if you build out a team, I, I built out several teams that I'm, I'm really super proud of. And um, you can do great things and you really can't do it if you're by yourself. I think we all know that. I think that's that's a great path because uh, one of the other things that I heard from a couple of people that we talked to was sort of this notion that uh, you you just always show up when it matters. And one of the experiences uh, that I've certainly had, and that you know David uh, David Cohen and I talk about a lot in the context of Give First, is this idea of just being there, just showing up, and uh, in a lot of cases, especially leaders. Um, don't necessarily show up for the people on their teams or the people that need them, or they show up with conditions. And the feedback consistently from other folks is that uh, you don't have the conditions. You just show up when it matters. Well, and I think that's, you know, I, 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 w I will say that I've, I've been taught um, by other leaders. I think Governor Hickenlooper is a great leader and, and um, I've been able to see some really great leaders in my day. And, and I think that's true. I think you do have to and especially when there's crises, um, you, you know, you can't, you can't really, you have to keep your emotion in check. And it's not that you're not human, but you just have to remember that everybody else is looking to you for something. And, you know, you just have to be aware of that at all times. And I think that's, if, if anybody has ever learned from me as a leader, um, it's that, you know, I'm not going to ever thrash out because I'm having a bad day. That's, that's just terrible. Um, leadership, even if, if things are on the line that, that you know, are, are, are big, you know, for you. So I think it's just important um, to remember that every day. And uh, just remember that if you're in a leadership position, people look up to you always 24 by seven, by you know, 365. And you just have to remember that. Now, as we start to wrap up this, uh, this podcast, uh, let's do a rapid fire round. I've got a couple of quick questions I'm going to ask you, and I'd love an under 30 second answer to each. Ready? All right, let's do it. All right. What's your favorite city in the world? Vancouver. I should say why, not one word, 30 seconds. <laughs> you know, I because I spent a lot of time playing music there and it was beautiful and it was just very, um, one of my favorite places that I've ever have seen. I live in Sedona now. I should say Sedona, Arizona, but um, Vancouver's just always been one of my favorite places. It's beautiful. Uh, since you mentioned uh, playing music, uh, what's your favorite band? Oh, that's a tough one. I'm really into dance music right now, which is very, very odd. But um, I don't know that I would say I have one. That I have a lot of different uh, ones that I really like. You love all the bands equally. So ACDC is high on the list. <laughs> exactly. Motley Crue okay. and those guys. There we go. Um, a book you've read recently that you think entrepreneurs should read? Well, your books. I, and I read your books um, over and over. And I know that sounds like it's, you know, I'm probably being, um, you know, sucking up to you, Brad, but I'm really not. I think your books are actually the greatest to, for startups. Oh, thanks. How about a book you've read that's not my book recently that maybe you would recommend or maybe you wouldn't, but that you enjoyed? Factfulness. Um, it's a really great book on kind of the outlook of the world. And it's got a really happy message as opposed to the, you know, kind of bad things that we read all the time. Other than TNC, if you could get involved in a charity or urge people to get involved in a particular charity, which one would it be? Any Humane Society. I'm a very big, I've got four dogs and a three-legged cat and they're all from the Humane Societies. And I just, I love animals and 
want to protect them as much as I can. <laughs> My response to that one is woof. <laughs> uh, if you could be an insect, what kind would you want to be? Oh, that's a really good one. Um, if I was going to be an insect, you know, I hate to say it, this is horrible, but mosquitoes are probably not bad. <laughs> they, they, you know, they, they seem to be able to have all the plagues around them and they survive. So. <laughs> It's awesome. I would be a cockroach. Oh, yeah, there um, you go. I would be un, I would be unkillable. <laughs> um, uh, last question: If you could have dinner with anyone, dead or living, who would it be? Yeah, you know, um, I would have to say um, Winston Churchill. Probably he was just one of my. Um, he was such an amazing character, character in a good way, bad way, and also did some really great things for the world. So I think he'd be fascinating. Cool, Sherry. Thank you for. A couple of things. One is um, being on, I think we're still sub 10 episodes of Give First. So on one of the first single digit episodes, as both David and I are figuring out how to do podcasts and have them be interesting and not suck. So thank you for uh, for that. Um, second, thank you for everything you're doing around entrepreneurship and uh, leadership, uh, especially with the Nature Conservancy. And I know from the perspective of the relationship between Techstars and Nature Conservancy, you know, you've got a key role in that. So just want to express appreciation from everyone at Techstars for all the support you do there. Well, and thank you, Brad, for all the, the great things that you do in the world. Um, I, I so appreciate it. Thanks for having me on the podcast. I appreciate it. You're welcome. And just for all the podcast listeners out there, I'm going to start playing with sound effects now. So whether or not these get cut, we'll see. So far in 2019, Techstars has launched a number of new offerings. One of them is called Techstars Talent. The Techstars Talent offering is focused on enabling Techstars worldwide network to build highly successful teams. Check out techstars.com if you want to learn more or get connected with the Techstars Talent team. See you next time. And don't forget to always give first. <laughs>